Hi, I'm Rachel, and welcome to my April 2022 book haul. This should be a short and sweet little book haul, but it starts with a... This should be a short and sweet little book haul, but I'm starting with something a little fun and spicy uh, to begin with. Uh, I am posting this uh, the day after Independent Bookstore Day in uh, the U.S., and as such, I wrapped up my April in uh, book hauling by going to a new-to-me independent bookstore. It's kind of crazy. I mean, I've been living in uh, the D.C. area for something like 16 years now. <laughs> and there's still a few bookstores I haven't been to in this area. And I decided this is the year that I should address that problem, and I picked one out, uh, and that one is uh, Bridge City Books. I will link to them down below. Uh, and I decided to take a little bit of a walk there. Uh, usually it's uh, not that accessible to me, I suppose, by walking, but uh, in the afternoon I was at my... Uh, writer salon uh, on uh, 18th and S around there and uh, and Bridge City Books was about a mile and a half away give or take at around Pennsylvania and 28th 29th something like that uh, and I decided to take a walk there and uh, show that journey show you a little bit of uh, random DC uh, and then show you inside the bookstore a little bit uh, so yeah, uh, it's a little bit of amateur hour uh, when it comes to filming, but uh, hopefully I, I got in uh, some good sights along the way. And action. Okay, and now to the books. Uh, I just have three uh, to show you this month, uh, trying to keep it uh, contained here. I had some, you know, uh, unexpected expenditures last month, and also uh, I'm pretty sure I might uh, go a little more crazy in, April, in May because uh, there's a couple of in-person book festivals uh, that are coming up for the first time in a few years, and I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> But anyway, back on track here, I'm going to start with a Passover purchase uh, that I got in time for the holiday. This is something that's actually been on my radar for a long time, and I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet. 
This is the unofficial Hogwarts Haggadah by Moshe Rosenberg. So yes, uh, you might be aware that in fact there is a bit of a cottage industry, I suppose, of uh, you know making quirky uh, you know Haggadot, which are uh, the uh, books that we read uh, for the Order of the Seder every year for Passover uh, for the Seders, uh, and. Uh, the idea of uh, expanding them to include uh, perhaps uh, less uh, traditional content uh, has been booming, and uh, this uh, this uh, writer decided to do so uh, by incorporating the Harry Potter story. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited as a Potterhead. I knew I wanted to get my hands on this. Uh, to sound stalkerish, I'm also aware of uh, his two children. Uh, he's uh, an Orthodox teacher, uh, which is a little different uh, than my norm. And in fact, I think uh, the uh, inside of uh, the Haggadah is, is uh, there's a lot more text study, which may or may not be in other more modern uh, interpretations. Uh, but anyway, getting back to embarrassing myself, uh, I follow his daughter on this uh, podcast, Nice Jewish Fangirls, where uh, three... Uh, Orthodox women uh, geek out about fan culture. I think that's their tagline. And then his uh, son uh, is uh, Yair of Rosenberg, uh, who I follow on Twitter. I, I find his commentary uh, nuanced, and I very much appreciate that, especially on Twitter of all places. So anyway, <laughs> my stalking is now complete, I suppose, and uh, it's fun to have this to dip in and out of and to, to see how he... Uh, it uh, interprets uh, Potter for the Passover story. I think it's a little more esoteric in a way than I was uh, expecting, a little more broad-minded, but uh, we'll see. I might be delving back into this uh, Haggadah in uh, future years now that it's in my greedy little hands. This next book I have to show you is a collection of short stories called Scary Old Sex by Arlene Heyman, which I picked up because May is a hybrid month for me. Uh, it is uh, National Jewish American Heritage Month, and it is also International Short Stories Month. And as such, I try to center on a short story collection written by a Jewish American author. And this is one that's been on my TBR for a decent amount of time, so I figured it was time to snatch it up. That being said, I might not or really probably won't get to reading this collection in May, because my TBR for May is kind of booming right now, and uh, I especially have the looming deadline for the Book 2 prize that I really have to pay attention to, and some other stuff coming up. So I'll probably end up reading this in June, uh, which is fine. <laughs> and uh, I'll be uh, highlighting it, though, in a blog post I do in May about uh, Jewish American short story collections. Uh, so... Yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, I only have vague memories now of where I heard about this collection uh, and uh, how I was able to connect it to a Jewish American uh, collection of short stories, but I'll see if I can uh, find something about that to link down below. And finally, we get to my uh, selection from Bridge City Books, an independent bookstore day. There, This was a very small little uh, bookstore, you know, a creaky row house, two stories uh, filled with uh, some books, uh, and, uh, you know, had a nice uh, but limited uh, literature collection, but I definitely saw a couple of uh, titles on my TBR list that I could have snatched up, uh, but I decided uh, to rein myself in because, as I said, I'll probably be, uh, you know, getting more books uh, in May anyway. Uh, so I decided in this case that uh, I wanted to go for Transcendent Kingdom by Yah Jesse, which very recently came out in uh, paperback. In fact, this was in their new releases section. So I got that sort of shiny, spiffy new feeling again, even though this book has been out for over a year now. Uh, but uh, brand new cover and everything uh, in a nice, uh, easily transportable uh, paperback right here. I really love, uh, you know, the color design on this one. Uh, and anyway, uh, I'm familiar with uh, Yah Jesse. I read uh, Homegoing uh, within the last couple of years at last and very much appreciated it and was uh, excited uh, to see about her uh, next uh, book coming out. So I will read from the flap or the back. <laughs> it's a paperback. So anyway, uh, Gifty is a sixth year PhD candidate in neuroscience at the Stanford University School of Medicine 
studying reward-seeking behavior in mice and the neural circuits of depression and addiction. Her brother, Nana, was a gifted high school athlete who died of a heroin overdose after an ankle injury that left him hooked on Oxycontin. Her suicidal mother is living in her bed. Gifty is determined to discover the scientific basis for the suffering she sees all around her. But even as she turns to the hard sciences to unlock the mystery of her family's loss, she finds herself hungering for her childhood faith and grappling with the evangelical church in which she was raised, whose promise of salvation remains as tantalizing as it is elusive. So yeah, uh, I was intrigued even without home going by the premise of this one because, you know, it's family drama and it's also the interplay between the protagonist's interest in science versus faith, which is, uh, I think it could be a heady uh, stomping grounds. Uh, and I have a lot of faith in how she handles her characters. It's interesting because Homegoing was like a, a lot of uh, vignettes of a sort that chapter by chapter took a little bit of a dip into, you know, a uh, nuclear family and they were linked together by being part of a broader family that, uh, you know, existed for over uh, 400 years. But this one uh, is a deeper dive into a uh, closer nuclear family in the US. Uh, so I'm excited for this. Uh, I was hoping it would make it further up the booktube prize last year than it really did, but uh, even when it, uh, you know, was uh, eliminated early, I still was, uh, you know, wanting to read this and kept it on my TBR. So I still have a lot of hope uh, for this book and uh, hopefully I'll be getting to it soon. So that about covers it for me now. I will leave the Goodreads links for all three of these books listed down below if you'd like more information. I hope to be back on this channel in the next couple of days to talk about my Maybe Midrash TBR. It is a readathon I am taking part in in May, and one of the reasons why, you know, my May TBR is all full up as it is. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I had a really fun day with trekking to uh, Bridge Street Books for, you know, Independent Bookstore Day. I guess the only downside is, as much fun as that was, I didn't do a lot of reading around it because I was doing a whole lot of walking instead, uh, including taking a longer way to get home uh, in order to find a uh, metro stop on uh, my line close to my uh, condo, uh, and I was pretty excited uh, to find that on my own. <laughs> I was heading to another station, a closer station to the bookstore, but then I saw, you know, an intersection of two streets and I thought, aha, I can find my way uh, to, you know, the red line from here, which is the line I live on. So yeah, small victories all around. <laughs> and I am loving these longer days as we are getting deeper into spring. So yeah, I hope all of you who participated in Independent Bookstore Day had a great time with it. I'd love to hear about uh, where you went and why and what books you got out of the deal. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>